Hello, hello. Thank you so much for checking out this video. And if you and I just meet for the first time, my name is Katarina Satori. It's a pleasure to meet you. And what is it I do in the world? I'm a transformational and business coach. And my biggest passion in life is helping people to connect with their true, true inner power, discover their authentic spiritual gifts, unlock their genius, and bring that genius into the world in a massive ways to create collective shift on our planet. So in this video, um, I was inspired to offer you just a few, few ideas on how to keep inspiration, how to keep the fire in your soul alive when the going gets tough. And um, I'll share with you a couple stories, but the number one is really keep your eyes on the horizon. Keep your eyes on the horizon. And it's funny that, you know, I'm filming this video and the sunset is going down. And this is the daily reminder for me, keeping the eyes on the horizon, especially when, you know, you have to do so many mundane things every day to move your mission, to move your vision forward just a little bit more and as us entrepreneurs the business owners if you're watching maybe you know you're working on really developing your dream and stepping into your greatness just a little bit bigger and bolder you know how many fears and how much resistance come up internally and externally and that resistance tests our limits that resistance tests our faith and if you just remember this very simple mindset shift you wake up every day and you say, where is my horizon? Where is my horizon? Where is my vision? And what is my why? And maybe it will help to you, you know, just to write down in the morning, write down your own manifesto, your own entrepreneurial dream. What are you committed to? No matter what's going on, you're going to keep your eye on the horizon right? And the second one, the second mindset is, is sometimes I say to myself, when I'm in the thick of something, something really challenging, you know, and um, life gets really foggy, and you don't even know what's your next step going to look like. I have this phrase that I say to myself in my mind, Katarina, one day, you'll laugh about this. One day, you're going to tell a story about this. One day, one day you will laugh about this. So maybe experiment with this phrase. It's so simple. But you know, um, this phrase came to me um, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, when I was still in my home, um, in my home country, Russia. And I was in St. Petersburg in the middle of a brutal Russian winter. And I'm standing in front of the building and I'm waiting for a man in a uniform. And I'm waiting for a man in a uniform to open the door and to give, me, to give me an answer that would absolutely alter my destiny. And it's cold outside. And I'm standing outside. I'm standing outside. And I'm shifting my weight from the right foot to the left foot just to keep my body warm. And all I'm saying, all I'm saying in my mind that one day I will laugh about it. One day I will make a story out of it. And one day I will remember that this experience was testing my faith. And it was testing my faith all right, you know? I was standing outside of that building, it was US consulate, and there was my chance, there was my chance to receive a visa, to receive US visa, to go work abroad as a, as a US student exchange um, student. And you know, at that time, um, I was just a student from Europe. I studied in Lithuania. I was originally from Russia. And it was not easy to receive a visa uh, to the United States. It was right after September 11. So the rules were really strict. Everything was much, much harder to, to get through. And me as an unmarried Russian young woman, I was like this triple, triple threat for immigration. So they were incredibly, incredibly strict. And the reason I was standing in front of that building because I put all my little savings into this program, student exchange program. And I had a, I had a hope, I had a chance that if I receive a visa, I can go to the United States and work entire summer, two jobs, three jobs, whatever they would let me. And that was my uh, opportunity to pay for my college, to pay for my school. And um, I also knew the risk I was taking. If my visa would be denied, 
then all the money that I invested in the program would be gone completely. There is no refunds. And basically, no opportunity, no refunds, and here I am, you know, left with nothing in the country that I don't even know anybody. And I'm standing, I remember this moment, I'm standing and I'm watching this door and I'm watching for this man in the uniform. And here he comes. Here he comes and he gives me an envelope and I take the envelope and I go a little bit to the corner of the building just to have a little bit of privacy. And in my mind, all I do is pray and chant or whatever I, I, whatever I could come up with at that moment, just, just saying and wishing, you know, hopefully this is the answer that I'm looking for. And I'm opening the envelope and my visa is denied. And you know that feeling when, when you get really, really bad news that you never expected, your feet get wobbly. It's almost like uh, the ground moves behind your feet. And I remember I had a place to stay. Um, I had a place to stay for one night and um, I had a decision to make. I had a decision to make according to the rules, um, governmental rules and immigration rules. If I was denied once with visa, I could apply one more time, one more time, but it has to be in a completely different consulate. And the consulate that I applied and was denied was in St. Petersburg. And the only other consulate I had an opportunity to go was in Vladivostok, my hometown, which was nine hours by plane. And since I didn't have any money by, for, for a plane ticket, I decided to buy a ticket, one-way ticket by train. And uh, it was six and a half days. And I remember all kind of thoughts were going through my mind. Am I crazy? Am I insane to take this risk? Is it a completely insane idea? And I remember trusting my faith. If I have made it to this point in my life, there was a reason for it. And it, it was just an opportunity to test my faith and to test, to test my courage. And, you know, I was, I was 23 years old, so it seems like a completely different life. But I remember that moment because it was a big opportunity to test my courage. And I decided, screw it. I'm just going to gamble it all in a way. I'm going to put all my chips on the table. I'm going to take this last chance. And if I get denied there, at least I will know. I will walk away from that opportunity knowing that I gave it all. I gave it all, and I will walk away with my head held high. Off I went on the train six and a half days. Six and a half days. You know, if you ever been on the train for a day, imagine six and a half days. It was a very humbling experience, and I remember arriving and stepping on, stepping on the ground after moving six and a half days, and my body was still wobbling, still getting used to the ground. And... <clears throat> I went to one of my mentors, one of my mentors who I used to work for when I still lived in Russia. And I went there and even though it was, it was challenging for a proud woman like me, especially at that time, I was very proud. It was challenging for me to ask for help. And there was also a lesson in that, you know, there was a lesson of that when you put your pride aside and you reach out to people that you know can really, really see your intention of your heart and can really support you at the critical point, miracles happen. So I went to my mentor and I told him my story. And I said that, you know, my dream is to finish one more year off my college. And this is my opportunity to pay for it. And all I need is just help, you know, um, help with the consulate, just put in a good word for me that I am not, a, I'm not going to immigrate. I'm, I'm, I'm really going to abide by the rules. And all I want is just to work and keep my word and come back to Russia. And my mentor, he just saw my heart and he saw my intention and he said, okay, let's see what we can do. And he sent, you know, a person from New Zealand who was his friend, you know, just like to go with me. And that person from New Zealand, he said, you know, I don't know if I can do anything, but at least, you know, I can, I can say a few words, you know, I can vouch for your character. I can vouch for your character. And that's all I needed. And I remember the day when I went to that consulate, you know, after, after, you know, sleepless night and being all worried about it, there was a moment of surrender. And I said, okay, I just got to surrender. I arrived to this point. I trust my guidance. Now, 
I'm just going to be me. I'm just going to show up at this interview, this uh, embassy interview, and I'm just going to speak authentically about my dream and what, what is it I want to go? Why do I want this visa? What, what is the intention behind it? And here's another powerful lesson, you guys, because, you know, if you speak your truth, you cannot fail. If you are authentically you, if you can speak your truth, people see it. People see it. Authenticity is hard not to notice. And that's exactly what I did. I remember that interview. I, I, was spoken, I was speaking to this person. I simply sharing. Here I am. This is my opportunity to simply um, make some money to pay for my school. And I was sharing about him my dream. I was sharing with him all the years that I volunteered as an interpreter for American students and for American people and how much I appreciate the country, how much I appreciate the people, and how much I would appreciate opportunity to actually experience the country from this new perspective. And I gave him my word. I gave him my word that after the summer is done and after my work visa is done, I'm going to come back. And the beautiful thing about this, you guys, you know, I kept my words, I came back, and the next year I went back again, you know, but that's another story. But you know, it's integrity, it's all integrity. If you, if the life gives you an opportunity to do something bold and big, it's commitment first, keeping your eyes on the horizon, uh, speaking your truth. When you speak your truth, you do not fail, you will not fail because you are congruent, congruent in your truth. And authenticity is contagious. When, when you share your why from your heart, people see it and the right people appear on your path, the right mentors, the right teachers, the right guide, right at, usually at the time where you are about, about to question your sanity. Help gets on the way. Help shows up. And, you know, I got to learn this big lesson on courage from really early age. And um, that decision, if I did not decide to risk it all and to jump with that six and a half days train and then to ask for help from my mentor and then lead with my courage and vulnerability, you and I would not have this conversation right now. And, you know, looking back, I wonder where would I be if I missed that chance? If I didn't push through the fear and decided to give my all in courageous leap. So that day where I went to the consulate with my New Zealand friend, I told this story. I told my real story. And um, the, consulate, uh, the, the consulate person who works in the consulate who did the interview, he looked at me and he said, I get it. Go, go spend money in the U.S. and good luck. Boom, approved. And that was the day that completely altered my destiny, completely altered my destiny. I, was, I felt inspired to share the story with you guys. I've never shared the story publicly before because as entrepreneurs, we are forced to take massive risks. And the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward, the bigger the risk, the bigger is your muscle of courage is being stretched. And what helps at those moments is to keep your eyes on the horizon. Now that I'm looking at the sunset, to keep your eyes on the horizon, to keep your, your faith, to keep your inner self, inner core, inner truth, strengthening what you can. And what you can strengthen is inside. And say, yes, I'm going to take this risk. There is a possibility I'm going to fall flat on my face. But as long as I know, I can pick myself up and reinvent myself and unleash a new level of creativity, I will be okay. I will be okay. But if you're not willing to have that conversation with you and actually, actually evaluate, okay, if I'm going to gamble this all and I'm going to risk this all, I'm going to go all in. And if I fall flat on my face, right? If um, What's the worst thing, thing that can happen? And you take yourself through that process and you say, okay, can I recover from that? Do I have enough soul courage to recover from any failure? Am I willing to put that bet on myself? Because I know, I know. I'm strong enough to reinvent, to pick myself up, dust myself from those ashes like that phoenix and rise up. If you can have that conversation with yourself, you can move mountains. I promise you, I can guarantee you that. 
But if you are not there yet, my question is, what can you do? What can you do today to strengthen your inner world? Because if you strengthen your inner world, your outside world will match that reality. But if your inner world gets shaken, right, and get frazzled by what's going on inside, it's going to be a bumpy ride. It's going to be a bumpy ride. So what can you do to strengthen your inner world? And what can you do to keep your eye on the horizon every single day? And the final mindset tip I'd like to share with you is this one. You know, on the days where um, I may lose perspective myself, in the days where I may doubt my own power, I break it all down, all these overwhelming thoughts and over, overwhelming concerns. I, I just take a giant step back and I say, Katarina, what can you do with what you have at hand? What would be the one single step you can take forward towards your dream with what's available at hand? And that brings you back into the present moment because an anxiety is an emotion of the future. Fear is an emotion of the past. When you come back into the now, you are free. If you find yourself on your entrepreneurial journey being pushed from an anxiety into the fear and back and forth, it's a signal that you simply lost awareness of the present moment. And that what do you need to do to return to the point of power, to the present moment? Reconnect with your vision, reconnect with your bigger why, with your horizon, and say, what can I do with what's available to me at hand? What step can I take that will move me towards my dream? Thank you so much for staying this entire video. I appreciate you tuning in. And if at any point, I can be of any service and support to you. Um, I'm very easy to reach. Just send me a message, send me a private message on social media or, or reach, out to, reach out to me directly. And I would love to explore, explore what's your horizon, what's your vision, what stands in the way from you, and what would be possible if you let yourself shine as brightly and as bigly, and what kind of impact would you make? So I'm here, always just a message away. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Love you guys. Keep your eyes on the horizon.